I'm Billy Davis. I'm a lawyer who spent years defending clients in business and industry from lawsuits. I've put together a series of videos explaining the techniques that you can use to look great on your video conference calls. If you're interested in watching those videos again, you can click this link right here that'll take you to them. I've received a lot of questions about the kind of gear that I use to make these videos. So I've put together this video to talk about the gear I use, why I like it, and where you can get it. I'm not compensated for the sales of these products. I haven't been given any free gear or anything like that. These are simply the products that I found uh, after doing my own research, and I use them nearly on a daily basis and have found them to be helpful. I'm interested in sharing with you what I've learned, and I hope it will help you accomplish whatever it is you're trying to achieve. I'm going to break down the gear I use into three sections that I'll call lights, camera, and action. In the lights section, I'll talk about the lights that I use and the light stands. In the camera section, I'll talk about the cameras I use and the tripods for the cameras. And in the action section, I'll talk about the miscellaneous gear that I use, such as microphones, green screens, and other equipment. Let's talk about lights, from small lights that you can use at your desk to larger lights you can use for a standing presentation. Advances in LED technology have brought us lights which are tiny, dimmable, the color temperature is adjustable, and best of all, they don't get too hot. Investing in some lights can give you a lot of control over how you look on video. The first lights I bought were these Viltrox LED panels. They're very tiny and portable, and they have dials on the back that allow you to adjust not only the brightness, but also the color temperature. One important thing to keep in mind about these lights is that they sell a version with a battery and one without a battery. I recommend you get the one without the battery. The batteries in these lights are not very effective. A better way to use them is to buy an inexpensive power supply such as this one, which will allow you to plug the lights into the wall. I use three different types of stands to hold these lights. The nice thing about lighting camera and microphone equipment is that it uses standard screw sizes so that something from brand X can screw into a stand or tripod made by brand Y. For a desktop or laptop setup, I use these clip-on light mounts. They're small and can clip onto the edge of a desk or shelf in order to hold a light or small camera. They're actually strong enough to hold up my Canon 90 DSLR camera, so they're very handy. Also for a desktop or laptop setup, I've used these compact telescoping mini tripods. They're made of plastic, so I wouldn't overload them, but they fold up into a very compact space, so they're excellent for setting up a studio on the go. Here they are in use with my laptop. For larger setups, I use these tripod light stands from Amazon. They're inexpensive, and they can hold up lights high if necessary. They also come with bags. One thing I found handy for setting up lights or other equipment on any of these light stands are these ball head joints, which allow you to precisely move a light into various positions and then hold it still. One thing about the Amazon light stands is that they don't have a boom arm on them, so if you need a light overhead, outside of the shot, there's really no way to do it with a standard tripod. That's where a C stand comes in. A C stand is a generic term for a type of light stand that was originally designed long ago by a company called Century Lighting in New York. The stand was called the Sentry Stand, and then it was eventually shortened to C Stand. The C Stand has a boom arm which will allow you to position an overhead light. Here's a relatively inexpensive stand I bought on Amazon from a company called Newer. It breaks down into a compact setup and even comes with a bag for traveling. Once I started doing larger green screen work, I invested in four inexpensive softbox lights. These softbox lights came in sets of two, complete with the bulbs, cords, tripods, and softboxes. They break down into a very compact arrangement for storage. The color temperature is not variable on these lights, but the brightness can be adjusted by selectively turning the five bulbs on or off using the buttons on the back of the light. One of the things I really like about them is that they come with two sets of diffusers, an internal one and an external one. This gives you the option to use the lights either with no diffuser for a direct light effect, or with one or both of the diffusers for a diffuse light effect that can make you look really sharp on video conference calls. You'll recall why if you've watched my earlier videos. When you're using large tripods such as the Amazon tripods, the tripods for the softbox lights, or a C-stand, it's a good practice to weigh down the base of the tripod with a sandbag. I use these inexpensive sandbags from ABC Canopy. I found them on Amazon. You'll have to buy the sand separately. I use children's sandbox sand from a local lawn and garden store. Pro tip, you'll want to be sure you use dry sand and I recommend putting the sand in a Ziploc bag before you insert it into the ABC Canopy sandbags. That way, no sand will leak out. And now let's take a look at the cameras. For cameras, I use a webcam or a DSLR depending on the setup. For calls on the go, I use this Logitech Streamcam. I bought an inexpensive carrying case so I can bring it with me when I travel. 
It sets up easily on the back of a laptop or monitor using the included mount, and it can also screw into a standard tripod for mounting on a desk or tripod, which is useful if you're standing up for your presentation. I can't cover all of the details of the free software that comes with the StreamCam since it would be beyond the scope of this video, but I can tell you that it's really good software. It has advanced green screen capabilities, and it also has a really cool feature where it will automatically follow your face as you adjust positions. This produces a dramatic effect when you're on calls. It's a nice little camera, and it's much better than the built-in camera on most laptops. Also, the camera has a feature which will allow it to film widescreen content, but it can also be turned vertically if you're filming content that's meant to be seen on a phone. Keep in mind that the StreamCam uses a USB-C cord. This is the newest type of USB connection. If your laptop or desktop doesn't have a USB-C port, you'll want to buy an adapter such as this so that you can plug the StreamCam in to a USB-A port. Many of you will be familiar with the USB-A ports. They've been around since the 90s. The camera I use most frequently is a Canon 90 DSLR. I plug it into my laptop using an HDMI cable where the laptop will then use it as a webcam. There are so many nice things to say about the Canon 90D, but a picture is worth a thousand words and a video is worth many thousands. One of the nice things about using a camera with interchangeable lenses is that you can dial in the focus to create really nice background effects, such as some of the blurry backgrounds you've seen in my videos. Using a zoom lens can also save you a lot of time from moving the camera. Instead, you just zoom. A DSLR camera is heavier than a webcam, so it needs a more substantial tripod to hold it up. If I'm traveling and I'm gonna use the big camera, I use this Manfrotto tripod. It's very compact and it can hold the Canon 90D and accessories with no problem. In other cases, I use this Mactrum tripod. It's sturdier than the Manfrotto tripod and it's also capable of raising the camera to a greater height. If you're a photographer, it's also useful because it can convert to a monopod, which you can use to steady your camera when you're out taking photographs. Now, neither of these tripods has a smooth enough head for panning shots. That is, where you're turning or tilting the camera in order to move across a wide area when you're shooting video. For that, you'd need a dedicated video tripod with something called a fluid head. Quality video tripods are significantly more expensive than the Manfrotto or Mactrum tripods that I own. But if you're not moving the camera while you're shooting video, you won't need one. Lights and cameras are the most powerful tools to contribute to a good image on screen we can't overlook things like microphones and setting because that brings the whole picture together. So let's talk about microphones and other gear that I use to complete the setup. For sound, I use a couple of different microphones. At my desk or in other positions where I won't be moving a lot, I use this Yeti Blue microphone. Yes, it's huge, but it sounds great. Most of the time, I just have it on my desktop, positioned outside of the shot so that no one on the call sees the microphone. Obviously, this one is way too big to travel with, but it does sound good. I'm using it to record this voiceover. The Blue Yeti microphone can attach to microphone stands. I use this inexpensive boom stand from OnStage. For other needs, I use this Rode Lavalier microphone. This is the mic that I use to record most of my videos that you've seen on YouTube. It's very portable and it plugs directly into my phone or laptop to give me great sound when I'm talking on video conference calls. One thing to keep in mind about the SmartLab Plus is that it specifically is designed to plug into mobile phones. Phones have a combination jack that carries both microphone and headphone signals. If you want to plug the SmartLab Plus into a device that accepts only microphones, you'll need this adapter also sold by Rode called the SC3. For presentations where I need to move, I use this Rode Go wireless system. Here's how it works. One end clips to the speaker and the other end plugs into the recording device. The part that clips to the speaker is a wireless microphone that communicates with the other part plugged into the recording device. What I really like is that the part that clips to the speaker also has a plug that will accept lavalier microphones. So I typically plug in my Smart Lav Plus with the SC3 adapter into one of the Rode Go devices. Then I plug the other device into my laptop or into my camera. Using that setup, I can move around freely with no wires while everything I say is cleanly recorded or streamed over my device. For green screens, I have two screens. For quick work while I'll be seated, I use this pullout screen from Elgato. It's portable, and the best thing about it is that the screen is always flat and wrinkle-free. If you watch my green screen video, you know why this is important. And if you haven't watched it, you should give it a look. For large presentations where I'll need a shot of most of my body or I'll be doing a lot of hand gestures or movement, I use this portable backdrop stand from eMart. It comes with a handy carrying case. You can take it with you if you need to go set up a green screen on the go. For the screen, I use an inexpensive green muslin from Neewer. 
If you recall from my video on green screens, it's important to keep the screen as wrinkle-free as possible. So I use these screen clips from Mutter. They attach to the edges of the backdrop stand and they clip onto the screen. They're made of elastic so that you can pull them to keep tension on the screen from both sides to reduce any wrinkles. Now, if you have any questions about any of this, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a comment below. I love to read the comments and I'll be sure to respond to you. I've put links to all the gear that I reviewed just below this video on the YouTube page. And last but not least, if you find these videos helpful, please don't forget to click the subscribe button to be notified when I release a new video. Next week, I'm going to release a video that's geared more toward my attorney colleagues, but frankly, it's equally applicable to anybody who does public speaking or needs to deliver dynamic presentations. I'm gonna show you how I set up my equipment in order to make a virtual appearance in court. Specifically, I'll be giving you tips on where to put your notes, how to maintain the appearance of eye contact with the audience, and how to read your notes without your audience noticing. If you need to appear on video for your next meeting or presentation, I'll know you'll find this one interesting.